SpaceX is closer than ever to the final iteration of the Starship thanks to a new prototype. The company aims to have the deep space transport ready in time for Artemis 3. Later, it is expected to take humans on the long journey to Mars. Let's take a closer look. Starship and Super Heavy are the biggest, most important pieces of Elon Musk's grand plan for SpaceX. Musk has repeatedly stressed that he founded SpaceX back in 2002, primarily to help humanity colonize Mars. It's vital that we become a multi-planet species, the billionaire entrepreneur has said, citing both a much-reduced probability of extinction and the thrill that meaningful space exploration will deliver to billions of people around the world. SpaceX is now actively trying to turn this sci-fi dream into reality. The company is developing a 100-passenger spaceship called Starship and a giant rocket known as Super Heavy, which together constitute the transportation system that Musk thinks will bring Mars settlement within reach at long last. When Musk revealed his idea to the world, he laid out a basic plan. A large spacecraft and a huge rocket, both of which will be completely and rapidly reusable. The rocket will launch the spacecraft into Earth's orbit, then come back down to Earth for a vertical, propulsive landing. The spaceship, meanwhile, will make its way from Earth's orbit to Mars. The craft will touch down on such alien worlds and take off from them as well, without the need for any additional landing craft or ascent vehicles. Off-Earth refueling of the ship is therefore key to Musk's vision. For example, spacecraft coming home from Mars or the Moon will need to be topped up on those worlds using locally produced propellant. In 2016, Musk called this architecture the Interplanetary Transport System. The name was new, as the billionaire had previously referred to his envisioned concept as the Mars Colonial Transporter. Back then, Musk stated that the ITS will stand 400 feet tall when stacked. The rocket will contribute most of that height, measuring 254 feet tall to the ship's 162 feet. There will be some overlap between the two vehicles during stacking, which explains why the total height isn't 416 feet. Both vehicles will be powered by SpaceX's next-generation Raptor engine, which is more powerful than the Merlin that propels the company's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. The ITS ship will sport nine Raptors, and the 40-foot-wide booster will boast a whopping 42, allowing the rocket to produce 13,033 tons of thrust at liftoff, 3.6 times more than NASA's Saturn V moon rocket was able to generate. And there won't just be one ITS ship and booster. The ultimate plan involves sending 1,000 or more people-packed spaceships to Mars every 26 months, helping to establish a million-person city on the Red Planet within 50 to 100 years. Musk did not lay out plans for building this city. That will happen organically as more and more people arrive on Mars, he said, comparing the ITS to the Transcontinental Railroad that helped open the American West to settlement from the East and Midwest in the 19th century. And these pioneers won't just be the super rich if all goes according to plan. The ITS's reusability could eventually bring the price of a Mars trip down enough to make it affordable for large numbers of people. This overall vision has held firm over the past three years, but Musk has repeatedly tweaked the design and the system's name. In 2017, for example, he announced that the ITS was now the BFR, which stood for Big Falcon Rocket. The BFR was shorter, slimmer, and less powerful than its design predecessor, measuring 348 feet tall by 30 feet wide when stacked and featuring only 31 Raptor engines on the booster and six on the spaceship. But the biggest change concerned the use of the spaceship rocket duo. Musk announced that SpaceX eventually planned to employ the BFR for all of its spaceflight needs, from launching satellites to ferrying people to and from Mars to cleaning up space junk in Earth orbit. The Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, therefore, will be phased out over the long haul, as will both the crew and cargo variants of SpaceX's Dragon capsule. Musk stated that expanding the BFR's role in this manner will make the system much more affordable for SpaceX to develop and manufacture. The BFR design then experienced a growth spurt that nearly took the system back to its original height. In September 2018, Musk told us that the rocket spaceship duo will now stand 387 feet tall when stacked. The BFR ship will also sport seven Raptors instead of six, and the vehicle will now sport four movable fins, two near its nose and two bigger ones near the tail. These fins will help the ship maneuver its way to safe landings on worlds with significant atmospheres, such as Mars and Earth. The two rear fins will also serve as landing pads, as will a leg that's stylized to look like a fin. Two months later, the BFR was no more. Musk told us that the system will now be called Starship. 
that will also be the spaceship's name, whereas the huge rocket will be called Super Heavy. At that point, SpaceX still planned to build the Starship vehicle out of carbon fiber. But in January 2019, Musk announced that he was switching to stainless steel. Steel is a bit heavier than carbon fiber, but has great thermal properties and is far, far cheaper. He has since called the material switch the best design decision yet made on the ITS slash BFR slash Starship project. In May 2019, Musk said the current plan calls for six Raptors on the Starship vehicle rather than seven. And a few months later, he tweeted that Super Heavy will now sport 35 Raptors instead of 31. That brings us to the latest design update, which Musk presented on September 28, 2019, from SpaceX's South Texas facility near the tiny village of Boca Chica. The billionaire didn't announce any huge changes, though there was some more engine news. Super Heavy will now have space for 37 Raptors, though not all of those slots will be filled on every flight. Each mission will probably require at least 24 Raptors on the booster. Musk had previously estimated the total development cost of the Starship project to be between $2 billion and $10 billion. He later stated that the price tag for SpaceX will be toward the lower end of that range. Over the years, the Starship has undergone even more design changes as scientists continue to make the vehicle as efficient as possible. Star Hopper was a low-altitude prototype of the Starship system that looked more like a flying tank than an aerodynamic rocket. SpaceX did two static fire tests of the system at its facility in Boca Chica, Texas to evaluate the performance of the engine in 2019, and then followed that up with four short test flights that same year. The Starship's first one-foot tethered hop lasted three seconds. The stubby vehicle made four test flights in total, two on a tether for safety reasons and two fully unleashed. On the first free flight, on July 25, 2019, the prototype soared to an expected altitude of 65 feet. Its last flight before retiring on August 27, 2019, was expected to go as high as 500 feet, in line with a limit imposed by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration. Starship's program tested several ground prototypes before attempting flight. The list of major prototypes from 2019 to 2020 included MK-1, MK-2, MK-3-SN-1, SN-2, SN-3, and SN-4. Starship's SN-5 and SN-6 prototypes conducted low-altitude test hops. SN-5 reached an altitude of about 500 feet on August 4, 2020, and moved sideways in the sky to reach its landing area. SN-6 also made a 500-foot jaunt on September 3, 2020. SpaceX deliberately destroyed SN-7 during a ground test to gather data for future flights. SN-8, which took to the air on December 23, 2020, performed complex aerial maneuvers and flips during the program's first high-altitude launch. It flew to 7.8 miles but failed to stick the landing, according to a video shot from the landing pad that showed it exploding in a fireball on the ground due to lower-than-expected pressure in the fuel tank header. In a quick sequence in February and March 2021, the Starship program sent aloft three more prototypes on high-altitude flights, SN9, SN10, and SN11. The vehicles flew for about six minutes each, but all three experienced technical problems during landing that resulted in fiery crashes or after-touchdown explosions. In April 2021, NASA selected SpaceX's Starship over the competition for a $2.9 billion moon lander contract that is part of the space agency's Artemis program. With that mission, NASA aims to put astronauts on the moon sometime in the 2020s. A previous 2024 target was deemed not feasible in August 2021 due to unrelated spacesuit development delays. NASA at first wanted to select two companies for this stage of the contract, but the agency received less money from Congress than desired for its human landing systems. SpaceX's Starship SN15 prototype stuck the landing on the 60th anniversary of the United States' first ever crewed spaceflight when astronaut Alan Shepard blasted into space aboard NASA's Mercury capsule. On May 5, 2021, SN15 soared 6.2 miles into the sky and made several maneuvers in midair. Six minutes after takeoff, the prototype made a safe touchdown on a concrete landing pad at Boca Chica. With such lofty plans for the future, a lot depends on the performance of the Raptor engines, which are at the core of every new rocket used by SpaceX. The company makes regular upgrades to the engine to improve its efficiency and reusability. In recent months, SpaceX has used two variants of the engine, with the newer one dubbed Raptor 2. The company states Raptor 2 includes a large number of performance and reliability improvements over the previous iteration. 
The Raptor engine is a full-flow staged combustion cycle engine that runs on super-chilled liquid oxygen and super-chilled liquid methane, both of which will power SpaceX's next-generation vehicle, Starship. The Raptor engine benefits from the highly advantageous FFSCC cycle, maximizing the impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. It is the third FFSCC engine to ever be developed and the first to leave the test stand. The first stage of Starship, called Super Heavy, will be jam-packed with 33 Raptor engines, 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. This number is expected to decrease in the future as SpaceX further upgrades Raptor. The Starship currently hosts six total engines, three vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines and three sea-level gimbling engines. As research and development continues on the Starship, the latest news from SpaceX is that a new prototype for the vehicle has successfully undergone a static fire test of its engines ahead of its first planned orbital test flight. SpaceX fired seven engines on its Starship Super Heavy prototype Booster 7 on September 19th, marking the highest number of the company's new Raptor engines ever tested at the same time. To prepare for Starship's maiden orbital flight, SpaceX has been conducting static fire tests with increasing intensity in which one or more engines are ignited while the vehicle remains stationary on the ground. A static fire test is a rough equivalent of revving a car engine in neutral, with this particular one lasting around 10 seconds. SpaceX is still awaiting a launch license from the FAA for the first orbital test flight of Starship. The company cleared a major hurdle in June with the completion of an environmental review that allows the launch to go forward but requires dozens of modifications to the mission plan. Once SpaceX has the green light from regulators, Starship will be able to launch from Starbase and take a brief trip to orbit before performing a splashdown landing in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hawaii. Super Heavy will separate from Starship shortly after launch and attempt to land on a modified drilling rig in the Gulf of Mexico. In addition to its inevitable role in getting humans to Mars, all of this is leading up to Starship's eventual participation in NASA's Artemis program to return astronauts to the surface of the Moon as soon as 2025. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about SpaceX's new artificial gravity rocket. Do you think a colony on Mars is a good idea? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.